the Pope? Robert, Browning. Like to Ahasuerus, the shrewd prince. I will begin. As is, these seven years now. My daily won't. And read a history. Written by one whose deaf right hand was dust. To the last digit, ages ere my birth. Of all my predecessors, popes of Rome. For though mine ancient early dropped the pen. Yet others picked it up and wrote it dry. Since of the making books there is no end. And so I have the papacy complete. From Peter first to Alexander last. Can question each and take instruction so. Have I to dare? I ask, how dared this Pope? To suffer. Such an on, how suffered he? Being about to judge, as now I seek. How judged once, well or ill, some other Pope? Study some signal judgment that subsists. To blaze on, or else blot, the page which seals. The sum up of what gain or loss to God. Came of his one more vicar in the world. So, do I find example, rule of life. So, square and set in order the next page. Shall be stretched smooth over my own funeral cyst. Eight hundred years exact before the year. I was made Pope, men made Formosus Pope. Say Sejibert and other chroniclers. Ere I confirm or quash the trial here. Of Guido Franceschini and his friends. Read. How there was a ghastly trial once. Of a dead man by a live man, and both, popes. Thus. In the antique penman's very phrase. Then Stephen, Pope and seventh of the name. Cried out, in synod as he sat in state. While collar quivered on his brow and beard. Come into court, Formosus, thou lost wretch. That claimedst to be late the Pope as I and at the word, the great door of the church. Flew wide, and in they brought Formosus self. The body of him, dead, even as embalmed. And buried duly in the Vatican. Eight months before, exhumed thus for the nonce. They set it, that dead body of a Pope. Clothed in pontific vesture now again. Upright on Peter's chair as if alive. And Stephen, springing up, cried furiously, Bishop of Porto, wherefore didst presume, to leave that sea and take this Roman sea, exchange the lesser for the greater sea, a thing against the canons of the church, then one, a deacon who, observing forms, was placed by Stephen to repel the charge, the advocate and mouthpiece of the corpse, spoke as he dared, set stammeringly forth, with white lips and dry tongue, as but a youth. For frightful was the corpse face to behold. How nowise lacked their precedent for this. But when, for his last precedent of all, emboldened by the Spirit, out he blurts. And, Holy Father, didst not thou thyself vacate the lesser for the greater sea? Half a year since change Arago for Rome. Ye have the sin's defense now, synod mine? shrieks Stephen in a beastly froth of rage. Judge now betwixt him dead and me alive. Hath he intruded or do I pretend? Judge, judge. Breaks wave like one whole foam of wrath. Whereupon they, being friends and followers, said a, thou art Christ's vicar, and not he. Away with what is frightful to behold. This act was uncanonic and a fault. Then, swallowed up in rage, Stephen exclaimed. So, guilty. So, remains I punish guilt. He is unpoped, and all he did I damn. The bishop, that ordained him, I degrade. Depose to laics those he raised to priests. What they have wrought is mischief nor shall stand. It is confusion, let it vex no more. Since I revoke, annul and abrogate. All his decrees in all kinds, they are void in token whereof and warning to the world. Strip me yon miscreant of those robes usurped, and clothe him with vile surge befitting such. Then hail the carrion to the marketplace, let the town hangman chop from his right hand, those same three fingers which he blessed withal. Next cut the head off, once was crowned for sooth, and last go fling all, fingers, head and trunk, in Tiber that my Christian fish may sup.
either because of iota chi theta upsilon sigma which means fish, and very aptly symbolizes Christ, or else because the Pope is fisherman, and seals with fisher's signet, anyway. So said, so done, himself, to see it done. Following the corpse, they trailed from street to street, till into Tiber wave they threw the thing. The people, crowded on the banks to see, were loud or mute, wept or laughed, cursed or jeered, according as the deed addressed their sense. A scandal verily, and outspake a Jew. What ye your Christ had vexed our Herod thus, now when, for Mosus being dead a year, his judge Pope Stephen tasted death in turn, made captive by the mob and strangled straight, Romanus, his successor for a month, did make protest for Mosus was with God, holy, just, true in thought and word and deed. Next Theodore, who reigned but twenty days, therein convoked a synod, whose decree, did reinstate, repope the late unpoped, and do away with Stephen as accursed, so that when presently certain fisher folk, as if the queasy river could not hold, it swallowed Jonas, but discharged the meal, produced the timely product of their nets. The mutilated man, Formosus, saved from putrefaction by the embalmer's spice, or, as some said, by sanctity of flesh. Why, lay the body again bad Theodore, among his predecessors, in the church, and burial place of Peter, which was done, and addeth Lutrand many of repute, pious and still alive, avouch to me, that as they bore the body up the aisle, the saints in image row bowed each his head, for welcome to a brother saint come back, as for Romanos and this Theodore, these two popes, through the brief reign granted each, could but initiate what John came to close, and give the final stamp to, he it was. Ninth of the name, I follow the best guides, who, in full synod at Ravenna held, with bishops seventy-four, and present too, you king of France with his archbishopry, did condemn Stephen, anathematize, the disinterment, and make all blots blank. For, argueth here auxilius in a place, do ordinationibus, precedents, had been, no lack, before Formosus long of bishops so transferred from sea to sea. Marinus, for example, read the tract. But, after John, came Sergius, reaffirmed, the right of Stephen, cursed Formosus, nay, cast out, some say, his corpse a second time, and here, because the matter went to ground, fretted by new griefs, other cares of the age. Here is the last pronouncing of the church her sentence that subsists unto this day, yet constantly opinion hath prevailed. In the church, Formosus was a holy man. Which of the judgments was infallible? Which of my predecessors spoke for God? And what availed Formosus that this cursed, that blessed, and then this other cursed again? Fear ye not those whose power can kill the body, and not the soul, saith Christ but rather those can cast both soul and body into hell. John judged thus in 898, exact 800 years ago today, when, sitting in his stead, vicegerent here, I must give judgment on my own behoof. So worked the predecessor, now, my turn. In God's name. Once more on this earth of God's, while twilight lasts and time wherein to work. I take his staff with my uncertain hand, and stay my six and fourscore years, my due, labor and sorrow, on his judgment seat, and forthwith think, speak, act, in place of him, the Pope for Christ. Once more appeal is made, from man's eyes to mine, I sit and see. Another poor weak trembling human wretch, pushed by his fellows, who pretend the right, up to the gulf which, where I gaze, begins, from this world to the next, gives way and way, just on the edge over the awful dark, with nothing to arrest him but my feet, he catches at me with convulsive face, cries leave to live the natural minute more, while hollowly the avengers echo leave, none, 
so has he exceeded man's due share. In man's fit license, wrung by Adam's fall, to sin and yet not surely die, that we, all of us sinful, all with need of grace, all cherry of our life, the minute more, or minute less of grace which saves a soul, bound to make common cause with who craves time, we yet protest against the exorbitance of sin in this one sinner, and demand, that his poor soul remaining piece of time, be plucked from out his clutch, put him to death. Punish him now, as for the weal or woe, hereafter, God grant mercy, man be just. Nor let the felon boast he went scot-free, and I am bound, the solitary judge, to weigh the worth, decide upon the plea, and either hold a hand out, or withdraw a foot and let the wretch drift to the fall. A, and while thus I dally, dare perchance, put fancies for a comfort twixt this calm, and yonder passion that I have to bear. As if reprieve were possible for both, prisoner and pope, how easy were reprieve. A touch of the handbell here, a hasty word, to those who wait, and wonder they wait long, in the passage there, and I should gain the life. Yea, though I flatter me with fancy thus, I know it is but nature's craven trick, the case is over, judgment at an end, and all things done now and irrevocable, a mere dead man is Francesini here. Even as for Mosus centuries ago, I have worn through this sombre wintry day, with winter in my soul beyond the worlds, over these dismalest of documents, which drew night down on me ere eve befell, Pleadings and counterpleadings, figure of fact, beside facts self, these summaries to wit, how certain three were slain by certain five, I read here why it was, and how it went, and how the chief of the five preferred excuse, and how law rather chose defence should lie, what argument he urged by wary word, when free to play off while, start subterfuge, and what the unguarded groan told, torture's feet when law grew brutal, outbroke, overbore, and glutted hunger on the truth, at last, no matter for the flesh and blood between, all's a clear read, and no more riddle now, truth, nowhere, lies yet everywhere in these, not absolutely in a portion, yet, evolvable from the whole, evolved at last, painfully, held tenaciously by me, therefore there is not any doubt to clear, when I shall write the brief word presently, and chink the handbell, which I pause to do, irresolute. Not I more than the mound, with the pine trees on it yonder, some surmise. Perchance, that since man's wit is fallible, mine may fail here, suppose it so. What then? Say. Guido, I count guilty, there's no babe. So guiltless, for I misconceive the man. What's in the chance should move me from my mind, if, as I walk in a rough countryside, peasants of mine cry thou art he can help, lord of the land and counted wise to boot, look at our brother, strangling in his foam, he fell so where we find him, prove thy worth, I may presume, pronounce, a frenzy fit, a falling sickness or a fever stroke, breathe a vein, copiously let blood at once, so perishes the patient, and anon, I hear my peasants, all was error, Lord, our story, thy prescription, for there crawled, in due time from our hapless brother's breast, the serpent which had stung him, bleeding slew, whom a prompt cordial had restored to health, what other should I say than God so willed, mankind is ignorant, a man am I, call ignorance my sorrow not my sin, so and not otherwise, in after time. If some acuter wit, fresh probing, sound, this multifarious mass of words and deeds, deeper, and reach through guilt to innocence, I shall face Guido's ghost nor blench a jot. God who set me to judge thee, meted out. So much of judging faculty, no more. Ask him if I was slack in use thereof. I hold a heavier fault imputable inasmuch as I changed a chaplain once, for no cause. No, if I must bear my heart, save that he snuffled somewhat saying mass. 
For I am where it is the seed of act. God holds appraising in his hollow palm. Not act grown great thence on the world below. Leafage and branchage, vulgar eyes admire. Therefore I stand on my integrity. Nor fear at all, and if I hesitate. It is because I need to breathe a while. Rest, as the human right allows, review. Intent the little seeds of act, the tree. The thought, to clothe indeed, and give the world. At chink of bell and push of arist door. O pale departure, dim disgrace of day. Winters in wane, his vengeful worst art thou. To dash the boldness of advancing march. Thy chill persistent rain has purged our streets. Of gossipry, pert tongue and idle ear. By this, consort neath archway, portico. But wheresoever Rome gathers in the grey. Two names now snap and flash from mouth to mouth. Sparks, flint and steel strike. Guido and the Pope. By this same hour tomorrow eve. Aha! How do they call him? The sagacious Swede. Who finds by figures how the chances prove. Why one comes rather than another thing. As, say, such dots turn up by throw of dice. Or, if we dip in Virgil here and there. And prick for such a verse, when such shall point. Take this, Swede, tell him, hiding name and rank. Two men are in our city this dull eve. One doomed to death. But hundreds in such plight. Slip aside, clean escape, by leave of law. Which leans to mercy in this latter time. Moreover in the plenitude of life. Is he, with strength of limb and brain adroit. Presumably of service here, beside. The man is noble, backed by nobler friends. Nay, for who wish him well, the city's self. Makes common cause with the house magistrate. The lord of hearth and home, domestic judge. Who ruled his own and let men cavil. Die. He'll bribe a jailer or break prison first. Nay, a sedition may be helpful, give. Hint to the mob to batter wall, burn gate. And bid the favorite malefactor march. Calculate now these chances of escape. It is not probable, but well may be. Again, there is another man, weighed now. By twice eight years beyond the seven times ten. Appointed overweight to break our branch. And this man's loaded branch lifts, more than snow. All the world's cark and care, though a bird's nest. Were a superfluous burthen, notably. Hath he been pressed, as if his age were youth. From today's dawn till now that day departs. Trying one question with true sweat of soul. Shall the said doomed man fitlier die or live? When a straw swallowed in his posset, stool. Stumbled on where his path lies, any puff. That's incident to such a smoking flax. Hurries the natural end and quenches him. Now calculate, thou sage, the chances here. Say, which shall die the sooner, this or that. That, possibly, this in all likelihood. I thought so, yet thou trip street, my foreign friend. No, it will be quite otherwise. Today. Is Guido's last, my term is yet to run. But say the Swede were right, and I forthwith. Acknowledge a prompt summons and lie dead. Why, then I stand already in God's face. And here since by its fruit a tree is judged. Show me thy fruit, the latest act of thine. For in the last is summed the first and all. What thy life last put heart and soul into. There shall I taste thy product. I must plead. This condemnation of a man today. Not so. Expect nor question nor reply. At what we figure as God's judgment bar. None of this vile way by the barren words which, more than any deed, characterize. Man is made subject to a curse, no speech. That still bursts over some lie which lurks inside. As the split skin across the coppery snake. And most, denotes man. Since, in all beside. In hate or lust or guile or unbelief. Out of some core of truth the excrescence comes. And, in the last resort, the man may urge. So was I made, a weak thing that gave way. To truth, to impulse only strong since true. And hated, 
lusted, used guile, forewent faith. But when man walks the garden of this world, for his own solace, and, unchecked by law, speaks or keeps silence as himself sees fit, without the least incumbency to lie, why, can he tell you what a rose is like, or how the birds fly, and not slip to false? Though truth serve better, man must tell his mate, of you, me and himself, knowing he lies, knowing his fellow knows the same, will think. He lies, it is the method of a man, and yet will speak for answer it is truth. To him who shall rejoin again a lie. Therefore this filthy rags of speech, this coil, of statement, comment, query and response, tatters all to contaminate for use, have no renewing, he, the truth, is, too, the word. We men, in our degree, may know, there, simply, instantaneously, as here, after long time and amid many lies, whatever we dare think we know indeed, that I am I, as he is he, what else? But be man's method for man's life at least. Wherefore, Antonio Pignatelli, thou, my ancient self, who wast no pope so long, but studied God and man, the many years, in the school, in the cloister, in the diocese, domestic, legate rule in foreign lands, thou other force in those old busy days, than this grey ultimate decrepitude, yet sensible of fires that more and more, visit a soul, in passage to the sky, left nakeder than when flesh robe was new, thou, not pope but the mere old man of the world, supposed inquisitive and dispassionate, wilt thou, the one whose speech I somewhat trust, question thee after me, this self now pope, hear his procedure, criticize his work, wise in its generation is the world, this is why Guido is found reprobate, I see him furnished forth for his career, on starting for the life chance in our world, with nearly all we count sufficient help, body, and mind in balance, a sound frame, a solid intellect, the wit to seek, wisdom to choose, and courage wherewithal, to deal with whatsoever circumstance, should minister to man, make life succeed, oh, and much drawback, what were earth without, is this our ultimate stage, or starting place, to try man's foot, if it will creep or climb, mid obstacles in seeming, points that prove, advantage for who vaults from low to high, and makes the stumbling block a stepping stone. So, Guido, born with appetite, lacks food, is poor, who yet could deftly play off wealth, straightened, whose limbs are restless till at large, and, as he eyes each outlet of the cirque, the narrow penfold for probation, pines, after the good things just outside the grate, with less monition, fainter conscience twitch, rarer instinctive qualm at the first feel, of the unseemly greed and grasp undue, then nature furnishes the main mankind, making it harder to do wrong than right, the first time, careful lest the common ear, break measure, miss the outstep of life's march, wherein I see a trial fair and fit, for one else too unfairly fenced about, set above sin, beyond his fellows here, guarded from the arch-tempter, all must fight, by a great birth, traditionary name, diligent culture, choice companionship, above all, conversancy with the faith, which puts forth for its base of doctrine just. Man is born no wise to content himself, but please God. He accepted such a rule. Recognize man's obedience, and the church, which simply is such rule's embodiment. He clave to, he held on by. Nay, indeed, near pushed inside of, deep as lame and durst, professed so much of priesthood as might sue, for priest's exemption where the layman sinned, got his arm frocked which, there, the law would bruise. Hence, at this moment, what's his last resource? His extreme stray and utmost stretch of hope. But that, convicted of such crime as law, wipes not away save with a worldling's blood. Guido, the three parts consecrate, may scape. Nay, 
the portentous brothers of the man, are veritably priests, protected each. May do his murder in the church's pale. Abate Paul, Canon Girolamo. This is the man proves irreligiousist. Of all mankind, religion's parasite. This may forsooth plead, din dear, jaded sense. The vice of the watcher who bides near the bell. Sleeps sound because the clock is vigilant. And cares not whether it be shade or shine. Doling out day and night to all men else. Why was the choice of the man to niche himself? Perversely neath the tower where time's own tongue. Thus undertakes to sermonize the world. Why, but because the solemn is safe too. The belfry proves a fortress of a sort. Has other uses than to teach the hour. Turns sunscreen, paravan and ombrefuge. To whoso seeks a shelter in its pale. A, and attractive to unwary folk. Who gaze at storied portal, statued spire. And go home with full head but empty purse. Nor dare suspect the sacristan the thief. Shall Judas. Hard upon the donor's heel. To filch the fragments of the basket. Plead. He was too near the preacher's mouth, nor sat. A tent with fifties in a company. No. Closer to promulgated decree. Clearer the censure of default. Proceed. I find him bound, then, to begin life well. Fortified by propitious circumstance. Great birth, good breeding, with the church for guide. How lives he? Cased thus in a coat of proof. Mailed like a man at arms, though all the while. A puny starveling. Does the breast pant big. The limb swell to the limit, emptiness. Strive to become solidity indeed. Rather, he shrinks up like the ambiguous fish. Detaches flesh from shell and outside show. And steals by moonlight, I have seen the thing. In and out, now to pray and now to skulk. Armor he boasts when a wave breaks on beach. Or bird stoops for the prize, with peril nigh. The man of rank, the much befriended man. The man almost affiliate to the church. Such is to deal with, let the world beware. Does the world recognize pass prudently? Do tides abate and see foul hunt in the deep? Already is the slug from out its mew, ignobly faring with all loose and free. Sand fly and slush worm at their garbage feast, a naked botch no better than they all. Guido has dropped nobility, slipped the church, plays trickster if not cut purse, body and soul, prostrate among the filthy feeders. 4. And when law takes him by surprise at last, catches the foul thing on its carrion prey, behold, he points to shell left high and dry. Pleads but the case out yonder is myself. Nay, it is thou, law prongs amid thy peers. Congenial vermin, that was none of thee. Thine outside. Give it to the soldier crab. For I find this black mark impinge the man. That he believes in just the vile of life. Low instinct, base pretension, are these truth. Then, that aforesaid armor, probity. He figures in, is falsehood scale on scale. Honor and faith. A lie and a disguise. Probably for all livers in this world. Certainly for himself. All say good words. To who will hear, all do thereby bad deeds. To who must undergo, so thrive mankind. See this habitual creed exemplified, most in the last deliberate act, as last. So, very sum and substance of the soul, of him that planned and leaves one perfect peace. The sin brought under jurisdiction now, even the marriage of the man, this act. I sever from his life as sample, show. For Guido's self, intend to test him by, as, from a cup filled fairly at the fount. By the components we decide enough, or to let flow as late, or staunch the source. He purposes this marriage, I remark, on no one motive that should prompt thereto. Farthest, by consequence, from ends alleged. Appropriate to the action, so they were. The best, he knew and feigned, the worst he took. Not one permissible impulse moves the man. From the mere liking of the eye and ear. 
to the true longing of the heart that loves. No trace of these, but all to instigate, is what sinks man past level of the brute, whose appetite if brutish is a truth, all is the lust for money, to get gold. Why, lie, rob, if it must be, murder, make. Body, and soul ring gold out, lured within. The clutch of hate by love, the trap's pretense. What good else get from bodies and from souls? This got, there were some life to lead thereby. What, where or how, appreciate those who tell. How the toad lives, it lives. Enough for me. To get this good, with but a groan or so. Then, silence of the victims. Were the feet, he foresaw, made a picture in his mind. Of father and mother stunned and echoless. To the blow, as they lie staring at fate's jaws. Their folly danced into, till the woe fell. Edged in a month by strenuous cruelty. From even the poor nook whence they watched the wolf. Feast on their heart, the lamb-like child his prey. Plundered to the last remnant of their wealth. What daily pittance pleased the plunderer dole. Hunted forth to go hide head, starve and die. So leave the pale or stricken wife, past hope. Of help in the world now, mute and motionless. His slave, his chattel, to use and then destroy. All this, he bent mind how to bring about. Put this in act and life, as painted plain. And have success, the crown of earthly good. In this particular enterprise of man. A marriage. Undertaken in God's face. With all those lies so opposite God's truth. For ends so other than man's end. Thus schemes. Guido, and thus would carry out his scheme. But when an obstacle first blocks the path. When he finds there is no monopoly. Of lies and trick in the tricking lying world. That sorry timid natures, even this sort. Are the comparini, want nor trick nor lie proper to the kind, that as the gore crow treats, the bramble finch foocheth the finch the moth, and the great guido, is minutely matched, by this same couple, whether true or false, the revelation of Pompilia's birth, which in a moment brings his scheme to naught, then, he is piqued, advances yet a stage, leaves the low region to the finch and fly, soars to the zenith whence the fiercer fowl, may dare the inimitable swoop. I see. He draws now on the curious crime, the fine. Felicity and flower of wickedness. Determines, by the utmost exercise. Of violence, made safe and sure by craft. To satiate malice, pluck one last arch pang. From the parents, else would triumph out of reach. By punishing their child, within reach yet. Who nowise could have wronged, thought, word or deed, in the matter that now moves him, so plans he, always subordinating, note the point, revenge, the manlier sin, to interest, the meaner, would pluck pang forth, but unclench, no gripe in the act, let fall no money piece, hence a plan for so plaguing, body and soul, his wife, so putting, day by day and hour by hour, the untried torture to the untouched place, as must precipitate an end foreseen, goad her into some plain revolt, most like, plunge upon patent suicidal shame, death to herself, damnation by rebound, to those whose hearts he, holding hers, holds, still, such a plan as, in its completeness, shall, ruin the three together and alike, yet leave himself in luck and liberty, no claim renounced, no right of forfeiture, his person unendangered, his good fame, without a flaw, his pristine worth intact, while they, with all their claims and rights that cling, shall forthwith crumble off him every side, scorched into dust, a plaything for the winds, as when, in our campagna, there is fired, the nest-like work that lets a peasant house, and, as the thatch burns here, there, everywhere, even to the ivy and wild vine, that bound, and blessed the hut where men were happy once, their rise is gradual, black amid the blaze, some grim and unscathed nucleus of the nest, some old malicious tower, 
some obscene tomb. They thought a temple in their ignorance, and clung about and thought to lean upon. Their laughs it over their ravage. Where are they? So did his cruelty burn life about, and lay the ruin bare in dreadfulness. Try the persistency of torment so. Are the wife, that, at some fierce extremity, some crisis brought about by fire and flame. The patient stung to frenzy should break loose. Fly anyhow, find refuge anywhere, even in the arms of who might front her first. No monster but a man. While nature shrieked, or thus escape, or die. The spasm arrived. Not the escape by way of sin. O oh God! Who shall pluck sheep thou holdest, from thy hand? Therefore she lay re-signed to die. So far. The simple cruelty was foiled. Why then? Craft to the rescue, craft should supplement. Cruelty, and show hell a masterpiece. Hence this consummate lie, this love intrigue. Unmanly simulation of a sin. With place and time and circumstance to suit. These letters false beyond all forgery. Not just handwriting and mere authorship but false to body and soul they figure forth, as though the man had cut out shape and shape, from fancies of that other aretine, to paste below. Incorporate the filth, with cherub faces on a missile page, whereby the man so far attains his end, that strange temptation is permitted. See? Pompilia, wife, and Capensaki, priest, are brought together as nor priest nor wife should stand, and there is passion in the place, power in the air for evil as for good, promptings from heaven and hell, as if the stars, fought in their courses for a fate to be, thus stand the wife and priest, a spectacle, I doubt not, to unseen assemblage there. No lamp will mark that window for a shrine, no tablet signalize the terrace, teach, new generations which succeed the old the pavement of the street is holy ground. No bard describe in verse how Christ prevailed, and Satan fell like lightning. Why repine? What does the world, told truth, but lie the more? A second time the plot is foiled, nor, now, by corresponding sin for countercheck. No while and trick to baffle trick and while. The play of the parents. Here the blot is blanched by God's gift of a purity of soul, that will not take pollution, ermine-like, armed from dishonor by its own soft snow. Such was this gift of God who showed for once, how he would have the world go white, it seems, as a new attribute were born of each, champion of truth, the priest and wife I praise, as a new safeguard sprang up in defense, of their new noble nature, so a thorn comes to the aid of and completes the rose. Courage to it, no woman's gift nor priest's. In the crisis, might leaps vindicating right. See how the strong aggressor, bad and bold, with every vantage, preconcerts surprise, flies of a sudden at his victim's throat. In a byway? How fares he when face to face, with Cape and Saki? Who fights, who fears now? Their quails count Guido, armed to the chattering teeth, cowers at the steadfast eye and quiet word. Are the cannon at the pieve, their skulks crime, behind law call into back cowardice, while out of the poor trampled worm the wife, springs up a serpent, but are none of these. Him I judge now, of him proceed to note, failing the first, a second chance befriends. Guido, gives pause ere punishment arrive the law he called, comes, hears, adjudicates, nor does amiss in the main, secludes the wife, from the husband, respites the oppressed one, grants, probation to the oppressor, could he know, the mercy of a minute's fiery purge, the furnace coals are like a public scorn, private remorse, heaped glowing on his head, what if, the force and guile, the oars alloy, eliminate, his baser soul refined. The lost be saved even yet, so as by fire. Let him, rebuked, go softly all his days. And, when no graver musings claim their due, 
meditate on a man's immense mistake. Who, fashioned to use feet and walk, gains crawl, takes the unmanly means. A, though to end. Man scarce should make for, would but reach throw wrong. May sin, but must not need shame manhood so. Since fowlers hawk, shoot, nay and snare the game. And yet eschew vile practice, nor find sport. In torchlight treachery or the luring owl. But how hunts Guido? Why, the fraudful trap? Late spurned to ruin by the indignant feet. Of fellows in the chase who loved fair play. Here he picks up the fragments to the least. Lades him and hies to the old lurking place. Where haply he may patch again, refit. The mischief, file its blunted teeth anew. Make sure, next time, a snap shall break the bone. Craft, greed and violence complo revenge. Craft, for its quota, schemes to bring about. And seize occasion, and be safe with all. Greed craves its act may work both far and near. Crush the tree, branch and trunk and root beside. Whichever twig or leaf arrests a streak. Of possible sunshine else would coin itself. And drop down one more gold piece in the path. Violence stipulates advantage proved. And safety sure, be pain the overplus. Murder with jagged knife. Cut but tear too. Foiled oft, starved long, glut malice for amends. And, last, craft schemes. Schemes sorrowful and strange. As though the elements, whom mercy checked, had mustered hate for one eruption more. One final deluge to surprise the ark. Cradled and sleeping on its mountain top. The outbreak signal. What but the dove's coos. Back with the olive in her bill for news. Sorrow was over. Tis an infant's birth. Guido's firstborn, his son and heir, that gives. The occasion, other men cut free their souls. From care in such a case, fly up in thanks. To God, reach, recognize his love for once. Guido cries, soul, at last the mire is thine. Lie there in likeness of a money bag. This babe's birth so pins down past moving now. That I dare cut adrift the lives I late. Scrupled to touch lest thou escape with them. These parents and their child my wife. Touch one. Lose all. Their rights determined on a head. I could but hate, not harm, since from each hair. Dangled a hope for me, now. Chance and change. No right was in their child but passes now. To that child's child and through such child to me. I am the father now. Come what, come will. I represent my child, he comes between. Cuts sudden off the sunshine of this life. From those three, why, the gold is in his curls. Not with old Pietro's, Violante's head. Not his grey horror, her more hideous black. Go these, devoted to the knife. Tis done. Wherefore should mind misgive, heart hesitate? He calls to counsel, fashions certain for. Colorless natures counted clean till now. Rustic simplicity, uncorrupted youth. Ignorant virtue. Here's the gold of the prime. When Saturn ruled, shall shock our leaden day. The clown abash the courtier. Mark it, bards. The courtier tries his hand on clownship here. Speaks a word, names a crime, appoints a price. Just breathes on what, suffused with all himself. Is red hot henceforth past distinction now. In the common glow of hell. And thus they break. And blaze on us at Rome, Christ's birth night eve. O angels that sang erst on the earth, peace. To man, good will. Such peace finds earth today. After the seventeen hundred years, so man. Wills good to man, so Guido makes complete. His murder. What is it I said? Cuts loose. Three lives that hitherto he suffered cling. Simply because each served to nail secure. By a corner of the money bag, his soul. Therefore, lives sacred till the babe's first breath. Overweights them in the balance. Off they fly. So is the murder managed, sin conceived. To the full, and why not crowned with triumph too? Why must the sin, conceived thus, 
bring forth death. I note how, within hair's breadth of escape, impunity and the thing supposed success, Guido is found when the check comes, the change, the monetary touch of the tether, felt by few, not marked by many, named by none, at the moment, only recognized a right, in the fullness of the days, for God's, lest sin, exceed the service, leap the line, such check, a secret which this life finds hard to keep, and, often guessed, is never quite revealed. Guido must needs trip on a stumbling block, too vulgar, too absurdly plain in the path. Study this till oversight of care, this hebitude that mars sagacity, forgetfulness of what the man best knew. Here is a stranger who, with need to fly, needs but to ask and have the means of flight. Why, the first urchin tells you, to leave Rome. Get horses, you must show the warrant, just. The banal scrap, clerk's scribble, a fair word buys. Or foul one, if a ducat sweeten word. And straight authority will back demand. Give you the pick of the post house. In such wise. The resident at Rome for thirty years. Guido, instructs a stranger. And himself. Forgets just this poor paper scrap, wherewith. Armed, every door he knocks at opens wide. To save him, horsed and manned, with such advance. Are the hunt behind, why twere the easy task. Of hours told on the fingers of one hand. To reach the Tuscan frontier, laugh at home. Light-hearted with his fellows of the place. Prepared by that strange shameful judgment, that. Satire upon a sentence just pronounced. By the rota, and confirmed by the Grand Duke. Ready in a circle to receive their peer. Appreciate his good story how, when Rome, the Pope King and the populace of priests, made common cause with their confederate, the other priestling who seduced his wife. He, all unaided, wiped out the affront, with decent bloodshed and could face his friends. Frolic it in the world's eye. A, such tale. Missed such applause, all by such oversight. So, tired and footsore, those blood flustered five, went reeling on the road through dark and cold, the few permissible miles, to sink at length, wallow and sleep in the first wayside straw, as the other herd quenched, in the wash of the wave. Each swine, the devil inside him, so slept they, and so were caught and caged, all through one trip. Touch of the fool in Guido the astute. He curses the omission, I surmise more than the murder. Why, thou fool and blind, it is the mercy stroke that stops thy fate, hamstrings and holds thee to thy hurt. But how? On the edge of the precipice, one minute more. Thou hadst gone farther and fared worse, my son, fathoms down on the flint and fire beneath. Thy comrades each and all were of one mind. Straightway, thy murder done, to murder thee. In turn, because of promised pay withheld. So, to the last, greed found itself at odds, with craft in thee, and, proving conqueror, had sent thee, the same night that crowned thy hope. Thither where, this same day, I see thee not. Nor, through God's mercy, need, tomorrow, see. Such I find Guido, midmost blotch of black, discernible in this group of clustered crimes huddling together in the cave they call. Their palace, outraged, day thus penetrates. Around him ranged, now close and now remote. Prominent, or obscure to meet the needs. Of the mage and master, I detect each shape. Subsidiary in the scene nor loathe the less. All alike, colored, all descried akin. By one and the same pitchy furnace stirred. At the center, see, they lick the master's hand. This fox-faced horrible priest, this brother brute. The abate. Why, mere wolfishness looks well. Guido stands honest in the red of the flame. Beside this yellow that would pass for white. This Guido, all craft but no violence. This copier of the mean and gait and garb. Of Peter and Paul, that he may go disguised. Rob halt and lame, sick folk in the temple porch. Armed with religion, 
fortified by law, a man of peace, who trims the midnight lamp, and turns the classic page, and all for craft, all to work harm with, yet incur no scratch. While Guido brings the struggle to a close, Paul steps back the due distance, clear of the trap. He builds and baits. Guido I catch and judge. Paul is past reach in this world and my time. That is a case reserved. Pass to the next. The boy of the brood, the young Girolamo. Priest, canon, and what more. Nor wolf nor fox. But hybrid, neither craft nor violence. Holy, part violence part craft, such cross. Tempts, speculation. Will both blend one day. And prove hell's better product. Or subside. And let the simple quality emerge. Go on with Satan's service the old way. Meanwhile, what promise? What performance too? For there's a new distinctive touch, I see. Lust. Lacking in the two. Hell's own blue tint. That gives a character and marks the man. More than a match for yellow and red. Once more. A case reserved, should I doubt. Then comes. The gaunt grey nightmare in the furthest smoke. The hag that gave these three abortions birth. Unmotherly mother and unwomanly. Woman, that near turns motherhood to shame. Womanliness to loathing, no one word. No gesture to curb cruelty a wit. More than the shepard thwarts her place and whelps. Trying their milk teeth on the soft of the throat. Are the first fawn, flung, with those beseeching eyes. Flat in the cover. How should she but couch? Lick the dry lips, unsheathe the blunted claw. Catch twixt her placid eye winks at what chance. Old bloody half forgotten dream may flit. Born when herself was novice to the taste. The while she lets youth take its pleasure. Last. These god abandoned wretched lumps of life. These four companions. Country folk this time. Not tainted by the unwholesome civic breath. Much less the curse of the court. Mere striplings too. Fit to do human nature justice still. Surely when impudence in Guido's shape. Shall propose crime and proffer money's worth. To these stout tall bright-eyed and black-haired boys. The blood shall bound in answer to each cheek. Before the indignant outcry break from lip. Are these in the mood to murder, hardly loosed. From healthy autumn finish, the ploughed glebe. Grapes in the barrel, work at happy end. And winter come with rest and Christmas play. How greet they Guido with his final task. As if he but proposed one vineyard more. To dig, ere frost come, then relax indeed. Anywhere, anyhow and any why. Murder me some three people, old and young. Ye never heard the names of. And he paid. So much? And the whole four exceed at once. Demur. As cattle would, bid march or halt. Is it some lingering habit, old fond faith? In the lord of the land, instructs them. Birthright batch. Of feudal tenure claims its slaves again. Not so at all, thou noble human heart. All is done purely for the pay. Which, earned. And not forthcoming at the instant, makes. Religion heresy, and the lord of the land. Fit subject for a murder in his turn. The patron with cut throat and rifled purse. Deposited in the roadside ditch, his due. Nought hinders each good fellow trudging home. The heavier by a piece or two in poke. And so with new zest to the common life. Matter can spade, plough tail and wagon shaft. Till some such other piece of luck betide. Who knows? Since this is a mere start in life and none of them exceeds the twentieth year, nay, more in the background, yet, unnoticed forms, claim to be classed, subordinately vile, complacent lookers on that laugh, perchance, shake head as their friend's horseplay grows too rough, with the mere child he manages amiss, but would not interfere and make bad worse, for twice the fractious tears and prayers, thou knowst, civility better, Marzi Medici, governor for thy kinsman the Grand Duke, fit representative of law, man's lamp, 
In the magistrate's grasp full flare, no rushlight end. Sputtering twixt thumb and finger of the priest, whose answer to these Comperini's cry, is a threat, whose remedy of Pompilia's wrong, a shrug of the shoulder, a facetious word, or wink, traditional with Tuscan wits, to Guido in the doorway, lord to law. The wife is pushed back to the husband, he, who knows how these home squabblings persecute, people who have the public good to mind, and work best with a silence in the court. Ah, but I save my word at least for thee, Archbishop, who art under me in the church, as I am under God, thou, chosen by both, to do the shepherd's office, feed the sheep. How of this lamb that panted at thy foot, while the wolf pressed on her within crook's reach? Wast thou the hireling that did turn and flee, with thee at least and on the little word? Such denizens are the cave now plussed around, and heat the furnace sevenfold, time indeed. A bolt from heaven should cleave roof and clear place. Transfix and show the world, suspiring flame. The main offender, scar and brand the rest. Hurrying, each miscreant to his hole, then flood. And purify the scene with outside day. Which yet, in the absolutest, drench of dark. Never wants a witness, some stray beauty beam. To the despair of hell. First of the first? Such I pronounce Pompilia, then as now. Perfect in whiteness. Stoop thou down, my child. Give one good moment to the poor old Pope. Heart sick at having all his world to blame. Let me look at thee in the flesh as erst. Let me enjoy the old clean linen garb. Not the new splendid vesture. Armed and crowned. Would Michael, yonder, be, nor crowned nor armed. The less preeminent angel. Everywhere. I see in the world the intellect of man. That sword, the energy his subtle spear, the knowledge which defends him like a shield. Everywhere, but they make not up, I think. The marvel of soul like thine, earth's flower. She holds up to the softened gaze of God. It was not given Pompilia to know much. Speak much, to write a book, to move mankind. Be memorized by who records my time. Yet if in purity and patience, if, in faith held fast, despite the plucking fiend, safe like the signet stone with the new name, that saints are known by, if in right returned, for wrong, most pardon for worst injury, if there be any virtue, any praise, then will this woman child have proved, who knows? Just the one prize vouchsafed unworthy me, ten years a gardener of the untoward ground, I till, this earth, my sweat and blood manure, all the long day that barrenly grows dusk, at least one blossom makes me proud at eve, born mid the briars of my enclosure, still. Oh, here as elsewhere, nothingness of man. Those be the plants, embedded yonder south, to mellow in the morning, those made fat, by the master's eye, that yield such timid leaf, uncertain bud, as product of his pains. While. See how this mere chance sown, cleft nursed seed, that sprang up, by the wayside neath the foot, of the enemy, this breaks all into blaze, spreads itself, one wide glory of desire, to incorporate the whole great sun it loves, from the inch height whence it looks and longs, my flower, my rose, I gather for the breast of God, this I praise most in thee, where all I praise, that having been obedient to the end, according to the light allotted, law, prescribed thy life, still tried, still standing test, dutiful to the foolish parents, first, submissive next, to the bad husband, nay, tolerant of those mean and miserable, that did his hests, eat out the dole of pain, thou, patient thus, couldst rise from law to law, the old to the new, promoted at one cry, are the trump of God to the new service, not, to longer bear, but henceforth fight, be found, sublime in new impatience with the foe, endure man and obey God, plant firm foot, on neck of man, tread man into the hell, meet for him, and obey God all the more, 
O child that didst despise thy life so much, when it seemed only thine to keep or lose, how the fine ear felt fall the first low word. Value life, and preserve life for my sake. Thou didst. How shall I say, receive so long? The standing ordinance of God on earth. What wonder if the novel claim had clashed. With old requirement, seemed to supersede. Too much the customary law. But, brave. Thou at first prompting of what I call God. And fools call nature, didst hear, comprehend? Accept the obligation laid on thee, mother elect, to save the unborn child. As brute and bird do, reptile and the fly. A and, I nothing doubt, even tree, shrub, plant, and flower of the field, all in a common pact. To worthily defend that trust of trusts. Life from the ever living. Didst resist. Anticipate the office that is mine and with his own sword stay the upraised arm, the endeavour of the wicked, and defend, him who, again in my default, was there, for visible providence, one less true than thou, to touch, in the past, less practised in the right, approved so far in all docility, to all instruction, how had such an one, made scruple is this motion a decree, it was authentic to the experienced ear, of the good and faithful servant, go past me, and get thy praise, and be not far to seek, presently when I follow if I may, and surely not so very much apart, need I place thee, my warrior priest, in whom, what if I gain the other rose, the gold, we grave to imitate God's miracle, greet monarchs with, good rose in its degree, irregular noble scapegrace, son the same, faulty, and peradventure ours the fault, who still missed each, mislead, throw hook and line, thinking to land leviathan forsooth, tame the scaled neck, play with him as a bird, and bind him for our maidens, better bear, the king of pride go wantoning a while, unplagued by cord in nose and thorn in jaw, through deep to deep, followed by all that shine, churning the blackness hoary, he who made, the kami terror, he shall make the sword, to match that piece of netherstone his heart, a, nor mispraise thereby, who else shut fire, in the stone, to leap from mouth at sword's first stroke, in lamps of love and faith, the chivalry, that dares the right and disregards alike, the yea and nay of the world, self-sacrifice, what if an idol took it, asked the church, why she was wont to turn in each Venus here. Poor Rome perversely lingered round, despite instruction, for the sake of purblind love, into Madonna's shape, and waste no wit, of aught rare on earth as gratitude. All this sweet savour was not ours but thine. Nard of the rock, a natural wealth we name, incense, and treasure up as food for saints, when flung to us, whose function was to give not find the costly perfume. Do I smile? Nay, cape and sacky, much I find amiss. Blameworthy, punishable in this freak. Of thine, this youth prolonged though age was ripe. This masquerade in sober day with change. Of motley too. Now hypocrites disguise. Now fools costume, which lie was least like truth. Which the ungainlier, more discordant garb with that symmetric soul inside my son, the churchman's or the worldling's. Let him judge. Our adversary who enjoys the task, I rather chronicle the healthy rage, when the first moan broke from the martyr maid, at that uncaging of the beasts, made bare. My athlete on the instant, gave such good, great undisguised leap over post and pale, right into the mid cirque free fighting place, there may have been rash stripping. Every rag. Went to the winds. Infringement manifold. Of laws prescribed pudicity, I fear. In this impulsive and prompt self-display. Ever such tax comes of the foolish youth. Men mulked the wiser manhood, and suspect. No veritable star swims out of cloud. Bear thou such imputation, undergo. 
The penalty I know wise dare relax. Conventional chastisement and rebuke. But for the outcome, the brave starry birth. Conciliating earth with all that cloud. Thank heaven as I do. A, such championship. Of God at first blush, such prompt cheery thud. Of glove on ground that answers ringingly. The challenge of the false knight. Watch we long. And wait we vainly for its gallant like. From those appointed to the service, sworn. His body guard with pay and privilege. White sinked, because in white walks, sanctity. Red socked, how else proclaim fine scorn of flesh. Unchariness of blood when blood faith begs. Where are the men at arms with cross on coat? Aloof, bewraying their attire, whilst thou. In mask and motley, pledged to dance not fight. Sprangst forth the hero. In thought, word, and deed. How throughout all thy warfare thou wast pure. I find it easy to believe, and if. At any fateful moment of the strange. Adventure, the strong passion of that strait. Fear and surprise, may have revealed too much. As when a thunderous midnight, with black air. That burns, rain drops that blister, breaks a spell. Draws out the excessive virtue of some sheathed. Shut unsuspected flower that hoards and hides. Immensity of sweetness. So, perchance? Might the surprise and fear release too much. The perfect beauty of the body and soul. Thou savadst in thy passion for God's sake. He who is pity, was the trial sore. Temptation sharp. Thank God a second time. Why comes temptation but for man to meet? And master and make crouch beneath his foot and so be pedestaled in triumph. Pray. Lead us into no such temptations, Lord. Yea, but, O thou whose servants are the bold. Lead such temptations by the head and hair. Reluctant dragons, up to who dares fight. That so he may do battle and have praise. Do I not see the praise? That while thy mates, bound to deserve in the matter, prove at need unprofitable through the very pains. We gave to train them well and start them fair. Are found too stiff, withstanding ranked and ranged. For onset in good earnest, too obtuse. Of ear, through iteration of command. For catching quick the sense of the real cry. Thou, whose sword hand was used to strike the loot. Whose sentry station graced some wanton's gate. Thou didst push forward and show metal, shame the laggards, and retrieve the day. Well done. Be glad thou hast let light into the world. Through that irregular breach of the boundary. See? The same upon thy path and march assured. Learning anew the use of soldiership. Self-abnegation, freedom from all fear. Loyalty to the life's end. Ruminate. Deserve the initiatory spasm. Once more. Work, be unhappy but bear life, my son. And troop you, somewhere twixt the best and worst. Where crowd the indifferent product, all too poor. Makeshift, starved samples of humanity. Father and mother, huddle there and hide. A gracious I may find you. Foul and fair. Sadly mixed natures, self-indulgent. Yet. Self-sacrificing too, how the love soars. How the craft, avarice, vanity and spite. Sink again. So they keep the middle course. Slide into silly crime at unaware. Slip back upon the stupid virtue, stay. Nowhere enough for being classed, I hope. And fear. Accept the swift and rueful death. Taught, somewhat sternlier than is wont, what waits. The ambiguous creature. How the one black tuft. Steadies the aim of the arrow just as well. As the wide faultless white on the bird's breast. Nay, you were punished in the very part. That looked most pure of speck. The honest love. Betrayed you. Did love seem most worthy pains? Challenge such purging, as ordained survive. When all the rest of you was done with. Go? Never again elude the choice of tints. White shall not neutralize the black, nor good. Compensate bad in man absolve him so. Life's business being just the terrible choice. 
so do I see, pronounce on all and some, grouped for my judgment now, profess no doubt. While I pronounce, dark, difficult enough, the human sphere, yet eyes grow sharp, by use. I find the truth, dispart the shine from shade, as a mere man may, with no special touch, of the links gift in each ordinary orb. Nay, if the popular notion class me right, one of well-nigh decayed intelligence, what of that? Through hard labor and good will, and habitude that gives a blind man sight, at the practiced finger ends of him, I do, discern, and dare decree in consequence, whatever prove the peril of mistake. Whence, then, this quite new quick, cold thrill, cloud-like, this keen dread creeping from a quarter scarce, suspected in the skies I nightly scan, what slacks the tense nerve, saps the wound-up spring, of the act that should and shall be, sends the mount, and massa the whole man's strength, conglobed so late, shudderingly into dust, a moment's work, while I stand firm, go fearless, in this world, for this life recognize and arbitrate, touch and let stay, or else remove a thing, judge this is right, this object out of place, candle in hand that helps me and to spare, what if a voice deride me, perk and pry, brighten each nook with thine intelligence, play the good householder, ply man and maid, with tasks prolonged into the midnight, test, their work and no wise stint of the due wage, each worthy worker, but with jives and whip, pay thou misprision of a single point, plain to thy happy self who lifts the light, laments the darkling, bold to all beneath, what if thy self-adventure, now the place, is purged so well, leave pavement and mount roof, look round thee for the light of the upper sky, the fire which lit thy fire which finds default, in Guido Franceschini to his cost, what if, above in the domain of light, thou miss the accustomed signs, remark eclipse, shalt thou still gaze on ground nor lift a lid, steady in thy superb prerogative, thy inch of inkling, nor once face the doubt, in the sphere above thee, darkness to be felt, yet my poor spark had for its source, the sun, thither I sent the great looks which compel, light from its fount, all that I do and am, comes from the truth, or seen or else surmised, remembered or divined, as mere man may, I know just so, more otherwise, as I know, I speak, what should I know, then, and how speak, were there a wild mistake of eye or brain, in the recorded governance above, if my own breath, only, blew coal alight, I called celestial and the morning star, I, who in this world act resolvedly, dispose of men, the body and the soul, as they acknowledge or gainsay this light, I show them. Shall I too lack courage? Leave. I, too, the post of me, like those I blame, refuse, with kindred inconsistency, grapple with danger whereby souls grow strong. I am near the end, but still not at the end. All till the very end is trial in life. At this stage is the trial of my soul. Danger to face, or danger to refuse. Shall I dare try the doubt now, or not dare? O oh thou! As represented here to me, in such conception as my soul allows, under thy measureless my atom width, man's mind. What is it but a convex glass, wherein I gathered all the scattered points, picked out of the immensity of sky, to reunite there, be our heaven on earth, our known unknown, our God revealed to man, existent somewhere, somehow, as a whole, here, as a whole proportion to our sense, there, which is nowhere, speech must babble thus, in the absolute immensity, the whole, appreciable solely by thyself, here, by the little mind of man, reduced, to littleness that suits his faculty, appreciable too in the degree, between thee and ourselves, nay even, again, below us, to the extreme of the minute, appreciable by how many and what diverse, modes of the life thou makest be, why live? 
except for love. How love unless they know. Each of them, only filling to the edge. Insect or angel, is just length and breadth. Due facet of reflection. Full, no less. Angel or insect, as thou framedst things. I it is who have been appointed here. To represent thee, in my turn, on earth. Just as, if new philosophy know aught. This one earth, out of all the multitude. Of people worlds, as stars are now supposed. Was chosen, and no sun star of the swarm. For stage and scene of thy transcendent act. Beside which even the creation fades. Into a puny exercise of power. Choice of the world, choice of the thing I am. Both emanate alike from the dread play. Of operation outside this our sphere. Where things are classed and counted small or great. Incomprehensibly the choice is thine. I therefore bow my head and take thy place. There is, beside the works, a tale of thee. In the world's mouth which I find credible. I love it with my heart, unsatisfied. I try it with my reason, nor decept. From any point I probe and pronounce sound. Mind is not matter nor from matter, but above. Leave matter then, proceed with mind. Man's be the mind recognized at the height. Leave the inferior minds and look at man. Is he the strong, intelligent and good? Up to his own conceivable height. No wise? Enough of the low. Saw the conceivable height. Find cause to match the effect in evidence. Works in the world, not man's, then God's, leave man. Conjecture of the worker by the work. Is there strength there? Enough, intelligence. Ample, but goodness in a like degree. Not to the human eye in the present state. This isosceli deficient in the base. What lacks, then, of perfection fit for God? But just the instance which this tale supplies. Of love without a limit. So is strength. So is intelligence, then love is so. Unlimited in its self-sacrifice. Then is the tale true and God shows complete. Beyond the tale, I reach into the dark. Feel what I cannot see, and still faith stands. I can believe this dread machinery. Of sin and sorrow, would confound me else. Devised. All pain, at most expenditure. Of pain by who devised pain. To evolve. By new machinery in counterpart. The moral qualities of man. How else? To make him love in turn and be beloved. Creative and self-sacrificing too. And thus eventually godlike, a. Eh? I have said ye are gods. Shall it be said for naught? Enable man to wring, from out all pain. All pleasure for a common heritage. To all eternity, this may be surmised. The other is revealed. Whether a fact. Absolute, abstract, independent truth. Historic, not reduced to suit man's mind. Or only truth reverberate, changed, made pass. A spectrum into mind, the narrow eye. The same and not the same, else unconceived. Though quite conceivable to the next grade. Above it in intelligence. As truth. Easy to man were blindness to the beast. By parity of procedure. The same truth. In a new form, but changed in either case. What matter so the intelligence be filled? To the child, the sea is angry, for it roars. Frost bites, else why the tooth like fret on face? Man makes acoustics deal with the sea's wrath. Explains the choppy cheek by chimic law. To both, remains one and the same effect. On drum of ear and root of nose, change cause. Never so thoroughly, so our heart be struck. What care I? by God's gloved hand or the bear. Nor do I much perplex me with aught hard. Dubious in the transmitting of the tale. No, nor with certain riddles, set to solve. This life is training and a passage, pass. Still, we march over some flat obstacle. We made give way before us, solid truth. In front of it, were motion for the world. The moral sense grows but by exercise. Tis even as man grew probatively. Initiated in godship, set to make. A fairer moral world than this he finds. Guess now what shall be known hereafter. 
thus. Are the present problem, as we see and speak, a faultless creature is destroyed, and sin, has had its way in the world where God should rule. A, but for this irrelevant circumstance, of inquisition after blood, we see, Pompilia lost and Guido saved, how long? For his whole life, how much is that whole life? We are not babes, but know the minute's worth, and feel that life is large and the world small. So, wait till life have passed from out the world. Neither does this astonish at the end. That, whereas I can so receive and trust, men, made with hearts and souls the same as mine, reject and disbelieve. Subordinate. The future to the present. Sin, nor fear. This I refer still to the foremost fact. Life is probation there's earth no goal. But starting point of man, compel him strive. Which means, in man, as good as reach the goal. Why institute that race, his life, at all? But this does overwhelm me with surprise. Touch me to terror. Not that faith, the pearl. Should be let lie by fishers wanting food. Nor, seen and handled by a certain few. Critical and contemptuous, straight consigned. To shore and shingle for the pebble it proves. But that, when haply found and known and named. By the residue made rich for evermore. These. A. These favored ones, should in a trice. Turn, and with double zest go dredge for whelks. Mud worms that make the savory soup. Enough? Are the disbelievers, see the faithful few. How do the Christians here deport them, keep. Their robes of white unspotted by the world. What is this Aretine Archbishop, this. Man under me as I am under God. This champion of the faith, I armed and decked. Pushed forward, put upon a pinnacle. To show the enemy his victor. See? What's the best fighting when the couple close? Pompilia cries, protect me from the fiend. No, for thy Guido is one heady, strong. Dangerous to disquiet, let him bide. He needs some bone to mumble, help amuse. The darkness of his den with, so, the form. Which limps up, bleeding to my foot and lies. Come to me, daughter. Thus I throw him back. Have we misjudged here? over-armed the knight, given gold and silk where the plain steel serves best, enfeebled whom we sought to fortify, made an archbishop and undone a saint. Well then, descend these heights, this pride of life, sit in the ashes with the barefoot monk, who long ago stamped out the worldly sparks, fasting and watching, stone cell and wire scourge, no such indulgence as unknits the strength. These breed the tight nerve and tough cuticle. Let the world's praise or blame run rillet wise. Off the broad back and brawny breast, we know. He meets the first cold sprinkle of the world. And shudders to the marrow, save this child. Oh, my superiors, oh, the archbishop here. Who was it dared lay hand upon the ark? His betters saw fall nor put finger forth. Great ones could help yet help not, why should small? I break my promise, let her break her heart. These are the Christians not the wordlings, not the skeptics, who thus battle for the faith. If foolish virgins disobey and sleep, what wonder? But the wise that watch, this time, sell lamps and buy lutes, exchange oil for wine. The mystic spouse betrays the bridegroom here, to our last resource, then, since all flesh is weak. Bind weaknesses together, we get strength. The individual weighed, found wanting, try. Some institution, honest artifice. Whereby the units grow compact and firm. Each props the other, and so stand is made. By our embodied cowards that grow brave. The monastery called of convertites. Meant to help women because these help Christ. A thing existent only while it acts. Does as designed, else a non-entity. For what is an idea unrealized? Pompilia is consigned to these for help. They do help, they are prompt to testify. To her pure life and saintly dying days. She dies, and lo, who seemed so poor, proves rich. What does the body that lives through helpfulness?
to women for Christ's sake. The kiss turns bite. The dove's note changes to the crow's cry, judge. Seeing that this our convent claims of right. What goods belong to those we succor, thee? The same proved women of dishonest life. And seeing that this trial made appear. Pompilia, was in such predicament. The convent hereupon pretends to said. Succession of Pompilia, issues writ. And takes possession by the fisc's advice. Such is their attestation to the cause. Of Christ, who had one saint at least, they hoped. But, is a title deed to filch, a corpse. To slander, and an infant heir to cheat. Christ must give up his gains then. They unsay. All the fine speeches. Who was saint is whore. Why, scripture yields no parallel for this. The soldiers only threw dice for Christ's coat. We want another legend of the twelve. Disputing if it was Christ's coat at all. Claiming as prize the woof of price. For why? The master was a thief, purloined the same. Or paid for it out of the common bag. Can it be this is end and outcome, all? I take with me to show as stewardship's fruit. The best yield of the latest time, this year. The seventeen hundredth since God died for man. Is such effect proportionate to cause. And still the terror keeps on the increase. When I perceive. How can I blink the fact. That the fault, the obduracy to good. Lies not with the impracticable stuff. Whence man is made, his very nature's fault. As if it were a vice, the moon may gild. Not melt, or stone, twas meant the sun should warm. Not make bare flowers. Nor ice nor stone to blame. But it can melt, that ice, and bloom, that stone. Impassable to rule of day and night. This terrifies me, thus compelled perceive. Whatever love and faith we look should spring. At advent of the authoritative star. Which yet lie sluggish, curdled at the source. These have leapt forth profusely in old time. These still respond with promptitude today. At challenge of. What unacknowledged powers. Are the air, what uncommissioned meteors, warmth. By law, and light by rule should supersede. For see this priest, this cape and sacchi, stung. At the first summons. Help for honor's sake. Play the man, pity the oppressed. No pause? How does he lay about him in the midst? Strike any foe, right wrong at any risk. All blindness, bravery and obedience. Blind? A, as a man would be inside the sun. Delirious with the plenitude of light. Should interfuse him to the finger ends. Let him rush straight, and how shall he go wrong? Where are the Christians in their panoply? The loins we girt about with truth, the breasts. Righteousness plated round, the shield of faith. The helmet of salvation, and that sword. Are the spirit, even the word of God. Where these? Slunk into corners. Oh, I hear at once. Hubbub of protestation. What, we monks? We friars, of such an order, such a rule. Have not we fought, bled, left our martyr mark? At every point along the boundary line. Twixt true and false, religion and the world. Where they saw the other dogma of our church. Called for defense. And I, despite myself. How can I but speak loud what truth speaks low? Or better than the best, or nothing serves. What boots deed, I can cap and cover straight. With such another doubtiness to match. Done at an instinct of the natural man. Immolate body, sacrifice soul too. Do not these publicans the same. Outstrip. Or else stop race, you boast runs neck and neck. You with the wings, they with the feet. For shame? Oh, I remark your diligence and zeal. Five years long, now, rounds faith into my ears. Help thou, or Christendom is done to death. Five years since, in the province of Tokine, which is in China as some people know. May Grot, my vicar apostolic there, having a great qualm, issues a decree. Alack, the converts use as God's name, not. Tian Chu but plain Tian or else mere Shang Ti. As Jesuits please to fancy politic. While, 
say Dominicans it calls down fire. For Tian means heaven, and Shang Ti, supreme prince. While Tian Chu means the lord of heaven, all cry. There is no business urgent for dispatch. As that thou send a legate, specially. Cardinal Qunon, straight to Pekin, there. To settle and compose the difference. So have I seen a potentate all fume. For some infringement of his realm's just right. Some menace to a mud-built straw-thatched farm. Other frontier, while inside the mainland lie. Quite undisputed for in solitude. Whole cities plague may waste or famine sap. What if the sun crumble, the sands encroach? While he looks on sublimely at his ease. How does their ruin touch the empire's bound? And is this little all that was to be? Where is the gloriously decisive change? The immeasurable metamorphosis. Of human clay to divine gold, we looked. Should, in some poor sort, justify the price. Had a mere adept of the rosy cross. Spent his life to consummate the great work. Would not we start to see the stuff it touched. Yield not a grain more than the vulgar got. By the old smelting process years ago. If this were sad to see in just the sage. Who should profess so much, perform no more. What is it when suspected in that power? Who undertook to make and made the world? Devised and did effect man, body and soul. Ordained salvation for them both, and yet. Well, is the thing we see, salvation. I put no such dreadful question to myself. Within whose circle of experience burns. The central truth, power, wisdom, goodness. God. I must outlive a thing ere know it dead. When I outlive the faith there is a sun. When I lie, ashes to the very soul. Someone, not I, must wail above the heap. He died in dark whence never morn arose. While I see day succeed the deepest night. How can I speak but as I know? My speech? Must be, throughout the darkness, it will end. The light that did burn, will burn. Clouds obscure. But for which obscuration all were bright. Too hastily concluded. Sun suffused? A cloud may soothe the eye made blind by blaze. Better the very clarity of heaven. The soft streaks are the beautiful and dear. What but the weakness in a faith supplies? The incentive to humanity, no strength. Absolute, irresistible, comports. How can man love but what he yearns to help? And that which men think weakness within strength. But angels know for strength and stronger yet. What were it else but the first things made new? But repetition of the miracle. The divine instance of self-sacrifice. That never ends and I begins for man. So, never I miss footing in the maze. No. I have light nor fear the dark at all. But are mankind not real, who pace outside? My petty circle, the world measured me. And when they stumble even as I stand. Have I a right to stop ears when they cry? As they were phantoms, took the clouds for crags. Tripped and fell, where the march of man might move. Beside, the cry is other than a ghost's. When out of the old time there pleads some bard. Philosopher, or both and? Whispers not. But words it boldly. The inward work and worth. Of any mind, what other mind may judge. Save God who only knows the thing he made. The veritable service he exacts. It is the outward product men appraise. Behold, an engine hoists a tower aloft. I looked that it should move the mountain too. Or else had just a turret toppled down. Success enough. May say the machinist. Who knows what less or more result might be. But we, who see that done we cannot do. A feat beyond man's force, we men must say. Regard me and that shake I gave the world. I was born, not so long before Christ's birth. As Christ's birth haply did precede thy day. But many a watch, before the star of dawn. Therefore I lived. It is thy creed affirms. Pope Innocent, who art to answer me. Under conditions, no wise to escape. Whereby salvation was impossible. Each impulse to achieve the good and fair. Each aspiration to the pure and true. Being without a warrant or an aim. 
was just as sterile a felicity, as if the insect, born to spend his life, soaring his circles, stopped them to describe, painfully motionless in the midair, some word of weighty counsel for man's sake, some know thyself or take the golden mean, for went his happy dance and the glad ray, died half an hour the sooner and was dust, I, born to perish like the brutes, or worse, why not live brutishly, obey my law, but I, of body as of soul complete, a gymnast at the games, philosopher, in the schools, who painted, and made music, all. Glories that met upon the tragic stage, when the third poet's tread surprised the two, whose lot fell in a land where life was great, and sense went free and beauty lay profuse, I, untouched by one adverse circumstance, adopted virtue as my rule of life, waived all reward, and loved for loving's sake and, what my heart taught me, I taught the world, and have been teaching now two thousand years, witness my work. Plays that should please, forsooth, they might please, they may displease, they shall teach. For truth's sake, so I said, and did, and do. Five hundred years ere Paul spoke, Felix heard, how much of temperance and righteousness, judgment to come, did I find reason for, corroborate with my strong style that spared, no sin, nor swerved the more from branding brow, because the sinner was called Zeus and God, how nearly did I guess at that Paul knew, how closely come, in what I represent, as duty, to his doctrine yet a blank, and as that limb are not untruly limbs, who draws an object round or square, which square, or round seems to the unassisted eye, though Galileo's tube display the same, oval or oblong. So, who controverts, I rendered rightly what proves wrongly wrought, beside Paul's picture, mine was true for me, I saw that there are, first and above all, the hidden forces, blind necessities, named nature, but the things self-unconceived, then follow. How dependent upon these, we know not, how imposed above ourselves, we well know, what I name the gods, a power, various or one, for great and strong and good, is there, and little, weak and bad there too, wisdom and folly, say, these make no god, what is it else that rules outside man's self, a fact then, always, to the naked eye, and, so, the one revealment possible of what were unimagined else by man. Therefore, what gods do, man may criticize, applaud, condemn. How should he fear the truth, but likewise have in all because of power, venerate for the main munificence, and give the doubtful deed its due excuse, from the acknowledged creature of a day, to the eternal and divine. Thus, bold, yet self-mistrusting, should man bear himself, most assured on what now concerns him most, the law of his own life, the path he prints, which law is virtue and not vice, I say, and least inquisitive where least search skills, in the nature we best give the clouds to keep, what could I paint beyond a scheme like this, out of the fragmentary truths where light, lay fitful in a tenebrific time, you have the sunrise now, joins truth to truth, shoots life and substance into death and void, themselves compose the whole we made before, the forces and necessity grow God, the beings so contrarious that seemed gods, prove just his operation manifold, and multiform, translated, as must be, into intelligible shape so far, as suits our sense and sets us free to feel, what if I let a child think, childhood long, that lightning, I would have him spare his eye, is a real arrow shot at naked orb, the man knows more, but shuts his lids the same, lightning's course comprehends nor man nor child, why then, my scheme, your better knowledge broke, presently readjusts itself, the small, proportioned largely a, parts and whole named new, so much, no more two thousand years have done, Pope, dost thou dare pretend to punish me, for not descrying sunshine at midnight, me who crept all fours, 
found my way so far, while thou rewardest teachers of the truth, who miss the plain way in the blaze of noon, though just a word from that strong style of mine, grasped honestly in hand as guiding staff, had pricked them a sure path across the bog, that mire of cowardice and slush of lies, wherein I find them wallow in wide day. How should I answer this Euripides? Paul? Tis a legend, answered Seneca. But that was in the day spring, noon is now? We have got too familiar with the light. Shall I wish back once more that thrill of dawn? When the whole truth touched man burned up, one fire. Assured the trial, fiery, fierce, but fleet. Would, from his little heap of ashes, lend. Wings to the conflagration of the world. Which Christ awaits ere he make all things new. So should the frail become the perfect, wrapped. From glory of pain to glory of joy, and so. Even in the end. The act renouncing earth. Lands, houses, husbands, wives and children here. Begin that other act which finds all, lost. Regained, in this time even, a hundredfold. And, in the next time, feels the finite love. Blent and embalmed with its eternal life. So does the sun ghastlily seem to sink. In those north parts, lean all but out of life. Desist a dread mere breathing stop, then slow. Reassert day, begin the endless rise. Was this too easy for our after stage? Was such a lighting up of faith, in life? Only allowed initiate, set man's step. In the true way by help of the great glow. A way wherein it is ordained he walk, bearing to see the light from heaven still more, and more encroached on by the light of earth. Tentatives earth puts forth to rival heaven, earthly incitements that mankind serve God, for man's soul's sake, not God's and therefore man's. Till at last, who distinguishes the sun, from a mere druid fire on a far mount, more praise to him who with his subtle prism, shall decompose both beams and name the true, in such sense, who is last proves first indeed, for how could saints and martyrs fail see truth, streak the night's blackness, who is faithful now, untwists heaven's pure white from the yellow flare, are the world's gross torch, without a foil to help, produce the Christian act, so possible, when in the way stood Nero's cross and stake, so hard now that the world smiles rightly done. It is the politic, the thrifty way, will clearly make you in the end returns. Beyond our fool's sport and improvidence, we fools go throw the cornfield of this life, pluck ears to left and right and swallow raw, nay, tread, at pleasure, a sheaf underfoot, to get the better at some poppy flower, well aware we shall have so much wheat less. In the eventual harvest, you meantime, waste not a spike, the rich liar will you reap. What then? There will be always garnered meal, sufficient for a comfortable loaf. Why you enjoy the undiminished prize? Is it not this ignoble confidence, cowardly hardihood, that dulls and damps, makes the old heroism impossible? Unless? What whispers me of times to come? What if it be the mission of that age? My death will usher into life, to shake this torpor of assurance from our creed, reintroduce the doubt discarded, bring, the formidable danger back, we drove, long ago to the distance and the dark, no wild beast now prowls round the infant camp, we have built wall and sleep in city safe, but if the earthquake try the towers, that laugh, to think they once saw lions rule outside, till man stand out again, pale, resolute, prepared to die, that is, alive at last. As we broke up that old faith of the world. Have we, next age, to break up this the new. Faith, in the thing, grown faith in the report. Whence need to bravely disbelieve report. Through increased faith in thing reports belie. Must we deny. Do they, these Molinists. At peril of their body and their soul. Recognized truths, obedient to some truth unrecognized yet, but perceptible, correct the portrait by the living face, man's God, by God's God in the mind of man, then, for the few that rise to the new height, 
the many that must sink to the old depth, the multitude found fall away, a few, even ere the new law speak clear, keep the old, preserve the Christian level, call good good, and evil evil, even though raised and blank, the old titles stand, throw custom, habitude, and all they may mistake for finer sense, other fact than reason warrants, as before, they hope perhaps, fear not impossibly, surely some one Pompilia in the world, will say I know the right place by foot's feel, I took it and tread firm there, wherefore change, but what a multitude will fall, perchance, quite through the crumbling truth subjacent late, sink to the next discoverable base, rest upon human nature, take their stand, on what is fact, the lust and pride of life, the mass of men, whose very souls even now, seem to need recreating, so they slink, worm-like into the mud light now lays bare, whose future we dispose of with shut eyes, they are baptized, grafted, the barren twigs, into the living stock of Christ, may bear, one day, till when they lie death-like, not dead, those who with all the aid of Christ lie thus, how, without Christ, whither unaided, sink, what but to this rehearsed before my eyes, do not we end, the century and I, the impatient anti-mask treads close on Kybe, are the very masks self it will mock, on me, last lingering personage, the impatient mime, pushes already, will I block the way, will my slow trail of garments never leave space, for pantaloon, sock, plume, and castanet, here comes the first experimentalist, in the new order of things, he plays a priest, does he take inspiration from the church, directly make her rule his law of life, not he, his own mere impulse guides the man, happily sometimes, since ourselves admit, he had danced, in gaiety of heart, in the main, the right step in the maze we bade him foot, what if his heart had prompted to break loose, and mar the measure, why, we must submit, and thank the chance that brought him safely through, will he repeat the prodigy, perhaps, can he teach others how to quit themselves, prove why this step was right, while that were wrong, how should he, ask your hearts as I asked mine, and get discreetly through the Morris so, if your hearts misdirect you, quit the stage, and make amends, be there amends to make, such is, for the Augustine that was once, this canon cape and sacchi we see now, and my heart answers to another tune, puts in the abate, second in the suite, I have my taste, too, and tread no such step, you choose the glorious life, and may, for me, who like the lowest of life's appetites, what you judge, but the very truth of joy, to my own apprehension which must judge, call me knave and you get yourself called fool, I live for greed, ambition, lust, revenge, attain these ends by force, guile, hypocrite, today, perchance tomorrow recognized, the rational man, the type of common sense, there's Loyola adapted to our time, under such guidance Guido plays his part, he also influencing in due turn, these last clods where I track intelligence, by any glimmer, those four at his beck, ready to murder any, and, at their own, as ready to murder him, these are the world, and, first effect of the new cause of things, there they lie also duly, the old pair, of the weak head and not so wicked heart, and the one Christian mother, wife and girl, which three gifts seem to make an angel up, the first foot of the dance is on their heads, still, I stand here, not off the stage though close, on the exit, and my last act, as my first, I owe the scene, and him who armed me thus, with Paul's sword as with Peter's key, I smite, with my whole strength once more, then end my part, ending, so far as man may, this offence, and when I raise my arm, what plucks my sleeve, who stops me in the righteous function, foe, or friend, oh, still as ever, 
friends are they, who, in the interest of outraged truth, deprecate such rough handling of a lie, the facts being proved and incontestable. What is the last word I must listen to? Is it spare yet a term this barren stock? We pray thee dig about and dung and dress, till he repent and bring forth fruit even yet. Is it so poor and swift a punishment? Shall throw him out of life with all that sin? Let mercy rather pile up pain on pain, till the flesh expiate what the soul pays else. No wise? Remonstrance on all sides begins. Instruct me, there's a new tribunal now. Higher than God's. The educated man's. Nice sense of honor in the human breast. Supersedes here the old coarse oracle. Confirming handsomely a point or so. Wherein the predecessor worked aright. By rule of thumb, as when Christ said. When, where. Enough, I find it in a pleading here. All other wrongs done, patiently I take. But touch my honor and the case is changed. I feel the due resentment. Nemini? Honorum Trado, is my quick retort. Right of him, just as if pronounced today. Still, should the old authority be mute, or doubtful, or in speaking clash with new, the younger takes permission to decide. At last we have the instinct of the world, ruling its household without tutelage. And while the two laws, human and divine, have busied finger with this tangled case. In the brisk junior pushes, cuts the knot, pronounces for acquittal. How it trips. Silverly over the tongue. Remit the death. Forgive. Well, in the old way, if thou please. Decency and the relics of routine. Respected. Let the count go free as heir. Since he may plead a priest's immunity. The minor orders help enough for that with Farinacci's license. Who decides? That the mere implication of such man, so privileged, in any cause, before, whatever court except the spiritual, straight quashes the procedure. Quash it, then. It proves a pretty loophole of escape. Moreover, that, beside the patent fact, are the law's allowance, there's involved the wheel. Are the popedom, a son's privilege at stake. Thou wilt pretend the church's interest. Ignore all finer reasons to forgive. But herein lies the proper cogency. Let thy friends teach thee while thou tellest beads. That in this case the spirit of culture speaks. Civilization is imperative. To her shall we remand all delicate points. Henceforth, nor take irregular advice. Other sly, as heretofore, she used to hint. Apologies when law was out of sorts, because a saucy tongue was put to rest, an eye that roved was cured of arrogance. But why be forced to mumble under breath? What soon shall be acknowledged the plain fact? Outspoken, say, in thy successor's time, methinks we see the golden age return. Civilization, and the emperor, succeed thy Christianity and pope. One emperor then, as one pope now, Meanwhile, she anticipates a little to tell thee take. Count Guido's life, and sap society, whereof the main prop was, is, and shall prove. Supremacy of husband over wife. Shall the man rule in the house, or may his mate, because of any plea dispute the same. Oh, pleas of all sorts shall abound, be sure. If once allowed validity. For, harsh. And savage, for, inept and silly sooth. For, this and that, will the ingenious sex, demonstrate the best master ever graced slave. And there's but one short way to end the coil. By giving right and reason steadily, to the man and master, then the wife submits. There it is broadly stated. Nor the time. Admits we shift. A pillar. Nay, a stake. Out of its place in the tenement, one touch. Where to may send a shudder through the heap, and bring it toppling on our heads perchance. Moreover, if this breed a qualm in thee, give thine own feelings play for once. Deal death. Thou, whose own life winks over the socket edge, wouldest thou it went out in such ugly snuff, as dooming sons to death, though justice bad. Why, 
on a certain feast, Barabbas self, was set free not to cloud the general cheer. Neither shalt thou pollute thy Sabbath close. Mercy is safe and graceful. How one hears. The howl begin, scarce the three little taps. Are the silver mallet ended on thy brow. His last act was to sacrifice a count, and thereby screen a scandal of the church. Guido condemned, the canon justified. Of course. Delinquents of his cloth go free. And so the Luthers and the Calvins come. So thy hand helps Molinos to the chair. Whence he may hold forth, till doomsday on just. These petty matra priestlings. In the choir. Sanctus et Benedictus, with a brush. Of soft guitar strings that obey the thumb. Touched by the bedside, for accompaniment. Does this give umbrage to a husband? Death. To the fool, and to the priest impunity. But no impunity to any friend. So simply over loyal as these four. Who made religion of their patron's cause. Believed in him and did his bidding straight. Asked not one question but laid down the lives. This pope took. All four lives together made. Just his own length of days. So, dead they lie. As these were times when loyalty's a drug. And zeal in a subordinate too cheap. And common to be saved when we spend life. Come, tis too much good breath we waste in words. The pardon, holy father. Spare grimace. Shrugs and reluctance. Are not we the world? Bid thee, our priam, let soft culture plead. Hecuba like, non tali, Virgil serves. Arcelio, and the rest. Enough, it works. The Pope relaxes, and the Prince is loath. The Father's bowels yearn, the man's will bends. Reply is apt. Our tears on tremble, hearts. Big with a benediction, wait the word. Shall circulate throw the city in a trice. Set every window flaring, give each man. Are the mob is torch to wave for gratitude. Pronounce it, for our breath and patience fail. I will, sirs, for a voice other than yours. Quickens my spirit. Qui pro domino. Who is upon the Lord's side? Asked the Count. I who write. On receipt of this command. A quaint Count Guido, and his fellows four. They die tomorrow, could it be tonight? The better, but the work to do, takes time. Set with all diligence a scaffold up. Not in the customary place, by bridge. Saint Angelo, where die the common sort. But since the man is noble, and his peers. By predilection haunt the people's square. There let him be beheaded in the midst. And his companions hanged on either side. So shall the quality see, fear, and learn. All which work takes time, till tomorrow, then. Let there be prayer incessant for the five. For the main criminal I have no hope. Except in such a suddenness of fate. I stood at Naples once, a night so dark. I could have scarce conjectured there was earth. Anywhere, sky or sea or world at all. But the night's black was burst through by a blaze. Thunder struck blow on blow, earth groaned and bore. Through her whole length of mountain visible. There lay the city thick and plain with spires. And, like a ghost, disshrouded, wiped the sea. So may the truth be flashed out by one blow. And Guido see, one instant, and be saved. Else I avert my face, nor follow him. Into that sad obscure sequestered state. Where God unmakes but to remake the soul. He else made first in vain, which must not be. Enough, for I may die this very night. And how should I dare die, this man let live. Carry this forthwith to the governor.